So this is the idea after they closed the Love Canal to have turned this into a creek uh, and a club and I guess they're going to make it into a park and you don't ever see any mention of it until you come way over here and it's the very bottom, the revitalization agency and that's what But from now on, everything is just called Black Creek. You'll never hear the word Love Canal. That would be important. So why not tell the story the way it was? I'd put a monument up to Gibbs, who was the one who stopped the suffering. Only mention you'll see of Love Canal. Everything else is Black Creek. Everything else. When did they, when did they rename this? The people started moving back in. They were told that these homes are now safe to live in in 2004 and I'll, I'll drive you down along the street there and it looks like a normal community you don't see any evidence that that people are unhappy about moving back in the the uh, canal was a big hole in the ground and uh, at some point bankruptcy was declared by love he just couldn't continue with it he didn't have any more funds right and it went up for public auction in the 1920s. And shortly after that, Hooker bid on it, Hooker Chemical. Yep. And they had stockpiled enormous quantities of material which needed to be safely disposed of. And they had it in these huge barrels. And so what, what, what were in the barrels? Well, some of things were a chemical called lindane, which they produced. And another one was uh, these uh, DDTs. And the government had said, you can't make it, we can't sell it, this is grim stuff. So they put it in these big barrels. And the barrels got moved here along with lots of other things, including a chemical called PCBs. There are about 200 different congeners of PCBs. To give you some idea how much was here, I just have a look. This is huge. They said over 20,000 tons of waste went into this from Hooker. 20,000 tons of waste. So this, this whole area here is just buried waste. That's right. So by 1942, um, the uh, burial was reaching the point where they were, maybe in 10 more years, they would finish burying everything they needed to. And at that point, they just put topsoil on top and graded it so it was at pretty well road level. In 1953, it had been covered by Hooker and they weren't going to use it anymore. There was no more room. And they decided to sell it for $1 to the Niagara Falls School Board. And uh, they, they found that they would have to sell it with a proviso that they never be sued by the Niagara Falls School Board or anyone else who bought the land. Uh, so that indicated to me, if you look at the deed, that they knew that something pretty grim was buried here. And I would have thought the Niagara Falls School Board would have realized this is not the place to build a school. But they did. Right at the edge of the Love Canal, they built a little 99th Street school. And that's where this whole thing really starts with uh, Lois Gibbs and her children getting sick. And then that escalated with state funds. And then finally, the federal government came and they said, uh, this is more than just moving a few families. And they gave the right for anyone living within a certain area of the Love Canal to leave, and they bought the homes. And the money for that was what we now call the Superfund. And that was all done with uh, Jimmy Carter's backing. Um, so then the question is, what do we do about the Love Canal? And we'll do that. This is the area that was all bulldozed. Oh, okay. And I think, I don't know for sure, that little house there, maybe somebody said, look, I don't want my home bulldozed, and they had the right to say that. And so a few homes remain. If you realize that rainwater was entering this area, 
and seeping down and picking up a lot of that oily material on the bottom and lifting it up. And then that oily stuff would be moving out with the rainwater. What would you do to stop that from happening? Look behind you and what you'll see is a thick clay layer that's relatively impervious to rainwater. So that kept the rain from going down into the Love Canal. It would just spill off. And this ditch that you see here on the left would collect the rainwater. Second question is, OK, but you still have 20,000 tons of buried toxic waste. What do you do about those? And now you have the Superfund, which is millions and millions of dollars to use, but you've got to get rid of those toxic wastes. Any idea how, to, how you do it? None. Shunko Company produced a very broad range of, of chemicals that included pesticides. Probably of greater concern was a substance called dioxin. It's got to be one of the deadliest chemicals known to man. A teaspoonful of dioxin in any large reservoir would render the entire reservoir unfit for drinking. So that's how potent this stuff is. They didn't produce dioxin intentionally. It was a byproduct. But they material that's buried here was contaminated with dioxin. So it was so important to make sure that none of that dioxin kept getting out and into the homes before they could tell people that's safe to move back. Okay, well this area was uh, bulldozed of any homes and now they, uh, there are no plans to build homes here. Their plan is to turn it into a park. There's a highway down there, and it even crosses the highway and continues. And we're looking toward the Niagara River, that was another big concern. Is this stuff seeping out into the Niagara River? Is it? I think that was the, a legitimate concern. Yeah. But is it seeping into the Niagara River? Do they know if it's seeping into the Niagara River? They, they set up a group of chemists at the Fort Erie, and they looked at all the water coming into the Niagara River and all the chemicals that were in it. And they had another group in uh, Niagara-on-the-Lake, and they did the same analyses. And there were a lot of new chemicals that weren't coming in upstream that they were finding at the bottom. Now, how many of those you can lay at the doorstep of Love Canal, and how many is 102nd Street? And there were all kinds of landfills. Back in 1978, when all this was revealed, people really were concerned about breathing in these chemicals. But the chemistry has improved. So this, up, they called it upstream downstream monitoring, shows that the stuff at the downstream site has dropped in toxicity substantially. A lot of the really bad players are at very, very low concentrations, including dioxin. After 2004, the government said that this is now safe to live here again, and they put the homes up for sale. People bought them at a very good pri low price right. and moved back in. Well, I don't know how much these people were told. As you can see, driving through here, you have no idea that this was the Love Canal. And the question I'm asking myself is, what have we learned from this experience? You can see there's another street there where the fire hydrant is. So they did all this block and then they did the next one. So it's like two blocks. So, so we've learned to live without these chemicals now, with a lot of these chemicals. We've learned how to control these chemicals, uh, dispose of these chemicals. Do you think that's another lesson we've learned from all this? Well, each chemical is special. Uh, PCB story, as you probably know, these PCBs are still with us. Um, even though we've stopped producing them, they'll live on for a thousand years. They just don't break down. Uh, so, and they're buried here. But at least here, they've pumped them out and they've attached them to activated carbon and they've destroyed them. But in many other sites, on this side and on the Canadian side of the river, PCBs are in the sediments and they're slowly getting out into the, into the uh, lake. This, the chemistry, of dioxin is complicated and how it's linked 
to the chemistry of the material that's placed on the ground to kill dandelions. As I understand it, these chemicals mimic a growth hormone that plants have called an auxin, and it causes the plant to grow out of control. And so the dioxin that's there is just a byproduct. Nobody wanted it there, but in the production of the pesticide, they produced a small amount of dioxin. And whether that's why we don't use it or whether there are other effects. But they, the chemical companies said, look, how could a chemical which just affects the growth of a plant hurt us? And most people bought it. Yeah, okay, just use it on plants.